Hi everybody, um, I'm here today to talk to you about the Salem Witch Trials. So, um, like back in 1992, when I was 11, um, I got a book out of the library about the Salem Witch Trials and uh, um, I read it and I became a little bit obsessed with like all of the different aspects of it. So it was kind of strange. I was so young, but, um, but I was a weird kid. So, um, so yeah, this is something that's like super interesting to me that I've been interested in like since I was a kid. Um, so we're going to talk about it today and hopefully I get all the facts right. I have some bullet points. So, um, so basically in January of 1692, um, a group of young girls in Salem Village in Massachusetts um, began having what was described as fits. Um, they took these girls to the doctor and the doctor, unable to find a reason for what was going on, told their parents that something supernatural was at play. So when this all happened, the girls ended up accusing several women of um, witchcraft, saying that these women were to blame for what happened to them, and these women were arrested. Uh, so this was 1692. This wasn't actually the start of witch trials. Witch trials had actually been going on since the 1300s in Europe. So between 1300 and the end of the 1600s, tri witch trials were happening all over Europe. And so this was kind of, for the rest of the world, this was the end of that stuff happening and, um, and it blew up in Salem right at that time. Um, so for many different reasons. But um, the witch trials that were happening around the world um, were, were pretty serious. Like tens of thousands of people, mostly women, were executed within that time. So this isn't just about like a small group of people in um, Salem, well Salem Village, which is now called Danvers, but um, this isn't just about these people. There, there's actually like tens of thousands of people that died because of these these kinds of accusations similar things happening throughout Europe so it's pretty um, pretty sad actually but um, so in in Salem village there was a lot of stuff going on that probably led to this so it, it was a really tense time for them um, in 1689, the English rulers started a war um, with some of the American colonies. So basically, um, upstate New York, Nova Scotia, and Quebec were ravaged by this war that was going on. And these refugees from these places fled to Salem Village. So this put a massive strain on their resources there and it also added tension to some stuff that was already going on with um, people that had wealth that was tied to um, the docks in Salem and the agricultural workers. So there was already some tension there and this strain on their um, system kind of aggravated that situation. There was also at that time some controversy surrounding their reverend Samuel Parrish, Paris, who was um, the first ordained minister in Salem at the time. The people thought that he was very rigid in his ways and they thought that he was a greedy man. So um, not everybody really liked him. So because all of this stuff was going on and because of their views of faith and religion and the devil and all of this stuff that was happening in Europe, they kind of viewed these things as the work of the devil. So it caused um, even more tension and it caused people to be paranoid. There's, um, there's a, a thing that some people believe that the bread that they were eating um, had like a, a mold or something in it that was causing people to hallucinate as well. So um, this would obviously have contributed to their problems. Um, because the people already viewed this as um, 
the work of the devil when these young girls started having these fits and they they happened to be the two girls that kind of started it all um were reverend paris's daughter and his niece so it it almost led to the credibility of it because the reverend's family wouldn't fake things or make stuff up or you know so um when people saw these young girls having these fits and when they would have them they would throw themselves down they would scream they would yell things they would make terrible noises um they would throw things i don't know if i said that already um and they would contort their bodies into kind of strange positions and um when people saw this it it obviously scared them so the do and when the doctor confirmed that this was happening because of supernatural means, the girls, it seems like, kind of just rolled with it and uh, and blamed some people um, for uh, for this. So three women were accused of witchcraft. Um, two of them said that they didn't do anything. They claimed their innocence. Um, and the third one, who happened to, to be Reverend Paris's um, Caribbean slave she confessed um, she also gave detailed descriptions of her interactions with the devil um, and with different things that came for the devil trying to get her to sign his book she admitted to signing the devil's book and accused several other women of witchcraft as well saying that they were trying to take down the Puritans of the time so um, all three of the women accused by these girls were arrested um, and this incident kind of fed the paranoia that the devil was at work in this area and it caused people to um, start accusing each other of witchcraft and nobody was safe not men not women not even children a four-year-old girl was questioned um, and her answers led the courts to believe that she confessed to witchcraft. She was four. So this is really, really kind of scary. Um, in May, the governor ordered a special court to be um, put together specifically for these witch trials. So... Once this was put together, the first person that came before the court accused of witchcraft was Bridget Bishop. She was an older woman. She was a bit of a spinster. She was known as promiscuous. Um, she had been accused of witchcraft and she went before the court and they asked her if she was a witch and she said no. And she said that she was as innocent as an unborn baby. Um, the court did not like her answer, they did not believe her, and she was the first person hanged for witchcraft in Salem Village. She was hanged on Gallows Hill. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was, it at that point, obviously took a very serious turn, and a very well-respected minister, Cotton Mather, wrote a letter to Salem Village asking that they stop this, that they not accept um, evidence, spectral evidence from people to, con to um, accuse people of witchcraft. He was largely ignored and, uh, and the trials continued, so that was obviously not good. Um, and finally, in October, the governor, Governor Phipps, prohibited any further arrests. Um, of people that were being accused of witchcraft. Now, it's really kind of to be seen if he did this because he actually believed that these people were not guilty of witchcraft or if he did it because his wife had recently been accused of witchcraft. Um, in any event, he ordered these um, arrests to stop. He released many of the, con of the accused and he um, dissolved the court that had been put together um, to deal with the witch trials and he uh, kind of put together a different court system um, in with his court system there was 56 people accused of witchcraft and I think three were um, were convicted so it was a lot less but um, it was still not good then uh, in May 1693, so now we've gone just over a year 
of these witch trials of people being accused of witchcraft and uh, um, and put before courts. Uh, he released all of the defendants that were left in jail. He uh, pardoned everybody that was uh, that was accused or convicted of witchcraft. But at that point, the damage had already been done. Um, 19 people had been hanged. One elderly man had been crushed to death under heavy rocks. And um, several people had died in jail waiting for their trials. So overall, almost 200 people were accused of witchcraft in that one year. And uh, so this was like a really kind of serious thing. And, and I think it's totally understandable that you still hear about it, you still read about it, it's still like really part of the culture of this area um, to this day, but they've kind of taken it back. So it's good. Um, but yeah, that's uh, the Salem witch trials kind of compacted into like 10 minutes. <laughs> because there's obviously so much more to it and there was like a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes and stuff even continued to happen after. Um, there was a lot of interesting characters involved in different aspects of the whole thing, but, um, but it all kind of boils down to when people are afraid, when paranoia is at play, people do crazy things sometimes and that's, it's not good. So, um, we hopefully the world will learn from stuff like this and uh and we won't let anything like this happen again hopefully right um but yeah that's it and uh, i'll be back on another day with another video about something else okay thanks guys bye